there is no hopeless area in your life. There is no area of your life that is beyond redemption. God chose us and, and said, I have set my gaze on you, daughter. You know, it's a new year, and you will see last week, our uh, father, the apostle of this house, he began teaching us from the, the book of Isaiah where the Lord was saying, Wake up! Wake up! Which means that there had been a moment of sleeping. There had been a moment that men have been in a place of a place of reluctantness. And God began to call us from the beginning of the year, said, sons, daughter, wake up. And not just for you to wake up. You know, it, it went for the saying, you should shake off the chains that have been bound you throughout the 2022. He said, now, daughter, son, look at you. This, this clothes look good on you. You should put on this strength that come from my word. And this morning, there is what God has given me to you. The Lord said that he just don't want you to wake up. He just don't want you to shake off. He does just want you to put on a good clothes, a strength that look good on you. But he wants you to work with him hallelujah he's calling you to walk with him to walk with him into your word promised land to walk with him into your zion there is no way you can get to your zion if you don't walk with this god you might even get you might even see the zion you will not notice that is your zion you might get to your promised land it wouldn't look like promised land because why there is no revelation so the Lord is calling you and I this morning, son, daughter, walk with me. The book of Matthew 4 verse 18, we read. Matthew 4 verse 18. One day as Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, also called Peter, and Andrew throwing a net into the water, for they fished for what? A living. This is two brothers. They have the business which they're so attached to. They have the business which gives them what? Income. There they make their needs. But what did you see here? Jesus was working. Jesus was on a journey. He calling uh, sons and daughters, come join with me. That I must show you something that you have missed all this why. I want to show you something that you have not known. The next verse. Jesus called out to them. Come, follow me. And I will show you how to fish for men. What is that business? Fishing. But look, sons and daughters, this is not what you should be doing. There is something more deeper some of us we have a business that we are doing at the present time and the lord is saying son daughter i want you to come with me leave this business just leave this business for a week this office yes they pay you well but i want you to leave this office come there is something i want to show you i want you to become a light somewhere i want you to begin to fish for men i want you your job to become a blessing to the kingdom where you can reach out to souls next verse please and they left their net at once and followed him what did they do they left their net at once they didn't say lord give me some time let me think about it they didn't say okay let me go and pray again perhaps what i'm hearing is not from you perhaps my mind is confusing me maybe it's a thought that i'm just conceiving on my own did you did that happen to you sometime when god asks you to do something 
then you begin to wonder, is it truly from God or is it just my thought or just my imagination? I think I have to take time and pray. I didn't say for you to take time and pray is wrong. But when you hear the voice of God as a son of God, as a daughter of the Zion, you will know the voice. Jesus said, my sheep will hear my voice. And they will do what? They will follow. He didn't say my sheep will hear and think again. Jesus called to this man. He said, abandon these things. I know that meant a lot to you. Just let it go. And what did he do? They never think twice. So God is calling you to the place that you will do what? Respond to him. In instance. That's it. Oh. See, I'm speaking. When I, I'm so grateful to God. I, I, God will always allow me to preach from my personal encounter. What has happened to me? What I've gone through? Personal experience is best. Because when you have your personal experience with God, you get to understand the mind of God, the, the system of God, his dealings. If you don't have tangible encounter, it will be difficult for you to walk with him. That is why he's calling you, come. I want you to work with me. There is something I need to show you. There is something I need to teach you in the season that you have missed. Without this particular thing, you have missed a lot. Last season, there is prophecy, word of revelation, knowledge that you have not made use of because there is some keys you have forgotten. You have not been able to you know, catch hold on. So the Lord is calling this morning and these guys did what? They followed him. Jesus is calling you and I this morning. He says, son, daughter, follow me. Follow me. Can we be open this morning to say, Lord, yes, I will. I'm coming with you. It doesn't matter how much I'm again in this business. It doesn't matter that, that you know, the, the good things they have been given to me or in the office, how you've been appreciated. The, the promotion, name it. But you say, Lord, I'm willing to back out. Next verse. It says, a little further up to the shore, he saw two other brothers, James and John, sitting in a boat with their father, Zebedee, repairing their nets. And he called, he, he called them, to, he call, so he called them to, to come. Next verse. They immediately followed him, leaving the boat and their father behind. Now, what do we see here? In the same seashore, in the same environment, in the same location, Jesus called four people. We are in a location. This church is a location. And God is calling not just the first person. Maybe you might be saying, I don't think this is for me. I think I'm good where I am. But Jesus is saying to you, I'm calling you too. He called them and they did what? They immediately followed him. Immediately, the other verse said, the previous one said, at once. Now, the second one said, immediately, they followed him. Now, there, there is something here that is so fascinating. The first group, they have only their net, right? And their boat. But these guys, they don't just have their boat and their net. They were even in a, in a moment of repairing what has been destroyed in the process of their transaction in the business perhaps is the work you are doing you are trying to fix something I want to patch it see we love patching we love to patch he said stop 
this is not the time to patch. This is not time to try to fix something that has poured. Let it go. This guy have their father. Do you know what it takes for you to look at the one that have called you and you said, Daddy, bye bye. They have attachment with their father. They have born with their father. They grew with their father. They act together with their father. What is that in your life that you grew with? You have lived with. You have so much attached with. Can you say goodbye to that particular thing? I may not know the name in your life, but you can name them. You can point them out. You can fish it out because it's your life. They follow Jesus instantly. Why is Jesus calling them to follow him? The previous verse said, come, I will teach you how to fish for men. Which means there is something I will need to teach you. I want you to have a revelational encounter. I want you to know the personality of the God who creates you. Because at this point, these guys, they don't know God. They don't know Jesus himself. They don't know the power of the Holy Ghost. So it is in our life. Many of us have not known the potential, the power, the ability God has given each one of us. And Jesus is calling, saying, come, come. If you can turn with me to the book of Mark, 9 verse 2. It says, six days later, Jesus took Peter James and John and led them up to a high mountain to be alone. As the men watched Jesus, appearance was transformed. This is number one key I want you to understand this morning. Jesus took them. They, because why? They respond to him because they obey and followed him. When they are walking with Jesus, something happened. It come to a moment, a time, that Jesus went up to pray. The Bible said, as Jesus was praying, they saw his appearance was what? Transformed. In other words, Jesus was teaching them, come, I need to teach you something. Sit here, watch me. I want you to learn how to pray. That when you pray in your walk with me, in your walk to Jerusalem, you will learn how to transform your physical being. You can transform your spirit man in your place of prayer. You can transform your heart in your place of prayer. I will teach you how to transform yourself. And I believe this morning that is what the Lord is doing. That you are learning how to change this mind. Because it's a, it's a season where we have to change our mindset. What we conceive and what we let to stay. Jesus' appearance was transformed. If you want to have that moment, that personal encounter, you have to be ready to come to the mountain. You cannot be transformed on the valley. No. When you are called, do you really want to see transformation? You have to be ready to walk up to the mountain. Moses didn't care how old he was. He climbed the mountain top. Why? Because he wants to have an encounter. He wants a revelation. How eager, how hungry are you this morning to climb to the mountain of the Lord that you might experience your personal transformation? Verse 3, please. And his clothes become dazzling white. For whiter than any earthly bleach could ever make them. Wow. His clothes become what? Whiter. Very whiter than any 
other thing you could see that earthly detergent can clean. When you walk with Jesus, see, I want us to understand something this morning. Your promised land is not just end on a physical location. Your promised land is in the spiritual location first. The earlier you are able to walk into your promised land spiritually, you can be able to dominate physical. Because if you haven't walked in the spirit realm, into your promised land, I tell you, you will get to your promised land, you'll fight and you'll be kicked out. There are many of us here, God has given you promise to your promised land. You got there, you lost the position, you lost your ground. Why? Because you have no work in the spirit realm to be mature, to be able to stand and defend and take what is yours. <laughs> uh, God is calling you a place that your mind, your character, your sensitivity, everything will become so white. As the word of God. Because the scripture was talking about who? The word of God himself. Christ. While he was praying. This is what happened to him. And God is calling you to that place. Verse 4. Then Elijah and Moses appeared. And began talking with Jesus. Elijah and Moses appeared began to talk to Jesus. Jesus is calling you, mind you, you need to know this. He's calling you to walk with him on a journey that you may know what is freely given to you. That you may know how to tap into your realms of power. How to walk into your realms of glory, right? And what we see, Jesus began to teach them to a next level. This is next level where you can communicate with the spirit. You can communicate with angels where you can speak you whenever you go on your knees. Do you know there are men today who speaks to the same Elijah Moses today? Do you think it's impossible? I will tell you it's possible. But I would not share so many things to you. I want you to understand that you have the ability to speak to angels one on one. You will talk to them. You understand. Okay. Let me share one thing with you. I had a, a place to go. Where I was invited to do something. Then suddenly. I was just sitting. I was taken into the realm of the spirit. I was having conversation. A football was playing. And they said the ball is out. Go and pick it up. The person went to pick the ball out. They locked the door. And I hear the person talking to me said, you will not have to do this again because they have removed you from this place. That is conversation. I was able to walk into that realm because it's a realm which I dwell. I was not just practicing it. This is what I live with. And it's easy for me to understand what is about to happen. God is calling you, church. A place you can talk to him one on one. He said, I speak to my servant Moses face to face. Is that realm still available today? Is that portal still open today? He's calling you to that place. You don't say it. How can I speak to God? The one who lives in inapproachable light. But he was the one who created you. He said, when you see my son Jesus, you have seen me. Do you think that he will appear and destroy you with his fire? No. He loves you so much that he desires. He is so hungry to have interaction with you. That is what Jesus was showing the disciple. That is what he was teaching them at that moment. His lifestyle becomes their own classroom where they are writing their exam. 
Next verse. 9 verse 37. Uh -oh. Verse uh, 7 of 9. Then a cloud overshadowed them. And a voice from the cloud said, Thus is my dearly loved son. Listen to him. Welcome to the cloud. Where you can hear the voice of the father. Because when you get to that mountain top. And you begin to interact with him. Wait. Wait. Most of the time we are so eager to move. <laughs> we want it to happen so fast. Just wait. Speak to him. Wait. Have conversation. Wait. You will definitely hear his voice. That is what Jesus was teaching them. This is what Jesus was taking them through. That you will come a place you have to pray. And when you pray definitely, you will hear the voice of the Father speaking to you. And what the voice said to them is, listen to him. When you have encounter with such a voice, you know what happened to you? You are only waiting for instruction. When you hear, when you learn the act to hear the voice of God, you wouldn't want to do anything without him giving you all the right. You want to wait. But even if you don't know, God is calling you a place that you should wait until he speak. Look at Peter. Matthew 14 verse 28. Then Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Next verse. Yes, come. Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water towards Jesus. This is a moment that is storm ranging against the disciple of Jesus. This St. Peter was the one Jesus called first. This St. Peter went to the mountain with Jesus. And what did Peter say? I know there is a storm. I know what I'm seeing look like a ghost. I know I'm not sure what is happening. But Lord, if that truly, if that real you, tell me to come. Have you waited to hear instruction from God before you take a step? Or do you just take your own decision? When the Lord said, move, did you move? The children of Israel, they always, the leaders, Moses, Aaron, Joshua, they always, Gideon, they will always go to the Lord and wait. What are you saying? What should we do? You run a business, you work in a company, you are in the school, you have a family. But you don't ask God, what should I do at this point? I know the place is not pleasing. I know there is confusion everywhere. But Lord, I'm waiting. What should I do? Should I take a step or not? When Jesus told him, now come. You see that Peter never walked opposite. He walked to us. Do we walk opposite on what God has asked us to do? Sometimes he wants you to, you know, give some crazy sacrifice or build a crazy altar. He gives you specific way to do it. And you're like, huh, this is too much. I will do it, but I will by cut a little. That is opposite. He wants you to walk straight towards him in the season. Because as you walk straight towards him, you are walking into your promised land. Most of you, your promised land is your health. Some of you, your promised land in this season is a new job. 
Some of you, your promised land in this season is your children. You want to see a transformation. Some of you, your parent, some of you, your brother, you've been praying, Lord, I want to see repentance in my home. Can you walk opposite towards him? Not opposite, towards him. Because when you walk towards him, it's easy for you to reach your goal. Amen. This is what Apostle Paul prayed to the church of Ephesians. That is what God wants you to understand and know. Ephesians 1 verse 17. It says, this is the prayer of Apostle Paul. It says, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of, in the knowledge of, he didn't say, I'm praying for you to grow in the knowledge of your business. For you to grow in the knowledge of God. That is the word I want you to, you know, focus on. Now, as you walk with him, the desire of God this season that you will grow in your knowledge of him. Not just for you to know him. See, it's easy for you to walk with someone yet you don't know the person. You might live with someone for years, decades. You might not even know a bit about that person. You will mistake him from so many things. But here, Apostle Paul was praying for the church. He said, this is my heart desire that you will grow in your knowledge of God. I believe it's the prayer of our Father. It's a prayer of everyone that we might grow in knowledge of Him, that we will understand His dealings, the way He wants us to do things, how He wants us to talk, how He wants us to, you know, to pray. He was teaching the disciples, this is what I want from you. And Apostle Paul was talking to the church in his prayer. He said, this is what I desire. This is what I've been freely given to you. But it's not open to you. Now I'm praying for you that it will come to your way. Verse 18. I pray that your heart will be flooded with light. So that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called his holy people who are his rich and glorious inheritance. What is this place saying? That my prayer is that your heart will be what? Flooded with light. Remember, Jesus is called the light of the word. And he wants your heart to be flooded with light. Not for you to carry light. You know how flood moves, right? Can you imagine your heart being flooded with the light of the word of God in your journey with him? What happened to you? Everything becomes so clear. You no longer walk in darkness. That everyone around you comes to see, whoa, every decision he takes whatever he touches hand to do wherever he goes you see light that your heart will be flooded with the light and also for you to do what to understand the confident hope God wants you to understand him if I don't want you to understand me, I will keep you far from me. But if I want you to understand me, I will bring you closer. The reason why he's calling you closer this season, that you may understand him and understand the confident hope that has been freely given to you. Why do you panic? Why do you complain? Why are you always in a mood of crying? 
because of the circumstances or something that happened because you don't know what I've been freely giving to you. If you know, if you know this is mine, you walk in full confidence. Even in the midst of storm, you will look at the environment you said. It might not seem something good is happening. Everywhere is full of dark. But I know I have walked with this God. I have had experience with him. I have seen him on the mountain. I have touched. Let me tell you. When you encounter the God of healing. When you encounter this God of healing. You don't need to panic when you have headache. When someone is sick around you, you don't need to panic. I know him. I have encountered him. I have touched him. Even if I don't pray, let me tell you, I believe, even if I give you a handshake, you become healed. I travel. I met a family. They were all sick when I came. Five of them. They say, Pastor, please, can you pray for us? We are sick. This one is this. This is that. I said, I don't need to pray for you. I carry the vessel of healing. I'm the healing himself. I tell you, I never pray for any of them. Before I left, none was sick. They were all bouncing, playing in the house. Have you encountered this God? Have you known him? If you have not known him or see him or touch him tangibly, he's calling you a place of encounter. That I'm the God of all flesh. I'm the God who multiplies. If you have not seen this God, <laughs> uh, tears will always run down to your eyes. Because there is something that you don't know about him. There are deeper things God is calling you to know about him this morning. The question is, are you willing to journey with him? Are you open to his instruction? Are you willing to climb that mountain? There is a confident hope that I've been given to you. That as you journey into your promised land, you're supposed to walk in full confident hope, not in fear. Not a complaint, not a murmur. That you look at someone that is that that is giving up in his life. Maybe the area of addiction. You look at the person and say, All I see in you is a great man. All I see in you is healing. All I see in you is transformation. And when you speak those words and leave, you see the person next week doing what you have never taught him doing. He becomes a symbol of God touch. Thank you Lord Jesus. Are we learning something this morning? Verse 19. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power. Let's stop this. Let's stop here. He said, I pray that you do what? You will understand the incredible greatness of God's power. Do you believe that this power is in you? Once you confess Christ, he said, those who believe that we, us who believe that if you can walk with him and believe, you will see this power at work in you. This power is not just <laughs> power. It's incredible power. A power that can turn any situation around. A certain kind of power 
that is so great that when Jesus looked at the demon, the man that was you know, afflicted with legions of demon, the awfully, that is the power, the incredible power, which means nothing could stand before this power. This power is in you. When you walk into your home, when you walk to your office, when you go to your community, when you travel to your hometown and you look around, you say to yourself, for us who believe, I speak to this territory. I command change. Because this is my own promised land. My community. This my state. Belongs to God. And it is mine. It has been freely given to me. And you begin to confess the word. You look at your life. You look to yourself in the mirror. You say I have the incredible power. Of God inside of me. Therefore I speak to your situation. Begin to change now. This is what God wants you to understand. He wants you to know this is what has been given to you. It only comes when you travel, when you journey with him. You will understand him and understand what he has given to you. Amen. Verse 20. The same mighty power is a that raised Christ from the dead. Seated him in the place of honor of God's right hand in the heavenly realms. When you walk with God, when you walk with God, this is what God has given to you. Apostle Paul is now opening your eyes through prayer. Jesus took his disciples to the mountain to show them something. But here, Apostle Paul is now praying, releasing it to the church. Because the same thing God is doing this morning is releasing the same revelation to you. He said to them that this same power when you walk with him this same power will seat you in a place of honor. Do you know the power of God it has the great ability to bring you a great promotion that causes men to honor you. Men will honor you unknowingly. Men will come running to serve you unknowingly. Because there is incredible power that you have possessed in your work with God. Because when you work with God, stage by stage, you begin to know him. Oh, he's the Alpha. He's the Omega. The beginning, the end, the first and the last. He's Jehovah Jireh. He provide. As you walk with him, your mindset, your understanding, your revelation change. There will be a great recycling within you because there is a word, there is a force within you that is taking you into those realms that you have not encountered before. Why? Because you choose to obey. You choose to follow. You choose to let go. You give an instant response. This power would not just sit you in the place of honor. This same power sit you in the heavenly realms where you rule and reign with God himself. Do you know why we are not able to reign in our location? Because we have not worked with him to understand. We are called to rule and reign. What the Bible said in the book of Genesis. Say rule. <laughs> you are to rule wherever you found yourself. You are to reign. You are to sit with God in the heavenly places. You understand every move that is happening around you. Nothing takes God on away. When you sit with God in heavenly realm, nothing happens. 
that is confused to you. It's so crystal clear because why? You are seated with him. The one who sees beyond the eyes of men. Not even before man says something. You were there before. You just laughed. You said, oh, Lord, thank you because you spoke to me earlier. There is nothing like you being informed before an accident. When you sit with God, you'll be informed. That is what God is calling you for. That information will not be far from you. Amen. 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 <laughs> Verse 21. The Bible says, now, he is what? Far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. Wow. That when you walk with him, your eyes will be open to see that the power he has given to you that what he have released inside of you in your walk with him that nothing on this earth could stand in your way he said now he is far above why do we always say this, this, this issue is more than me this thing is overwhelming me no if truly you can walk with him. There is no situation that will overwhelm you. Because when you walk with him, your eyes will be open to the scripture and you will see he said that he is far above. Who is Christ? If Christ is far above and you believe and walk in confidence with him, which means you also, you are far above any sickness. There is a length to walk with God that you become above reproach. There's a length to walk with God. Sickness would not come to your dwelling. There's a length to walk with God. You will not experience failure. What did Apostle Paul say? Resist the devil. He will flee. Do you know even the devil also get tired? You don't know. He also get tired. Even when you beat him, he still struggle and come. No, I'm not giving up. He comes back. But Bible said, when you resist him, he will do what? He will flee. How can you resist him if you have not walked with the one who has the ability to open your eyes? to see how to resist him. Walk with the God of the Bible. Walk with the God of all flesh. He has given you weapon. You carry it every day in your phone, in your home, in your car, everywhere. How much do you invest in this word? He has a lot to teach you. He has a lot to show you. He wants you to journey with him. And that is what is calling us for this season. To journey with him. Jesus walked with his disciples. He took them to the mountain. And they all saw so many things about Jesus. But there is a time when Jesus knew, I'm about to depart from this place. These guys are going to become general. But the question is, did they really know who I am? Did they really know what has been given to them? Look at the question of Jesus. In Matthew 16 verse 3. When Jesus came to the region of Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the son of man is? This is a question 
to men who has worked with Jesus. That's what I say to you. That you might work with someone for decades, weeks, years. Yet, you don't know the person. You don't know what the person has given to you. You don't know that every money in the person account is yours. You don't know that every privilege that that person has from another person is yours. Because everything Christ has through God is yours. But Jesus now asking them, I know you guys are going to be a great man tomorrow, but it has to do with understanding. Do you really know who I am? And look at the answer in verse 15, uh, 14. Well, they replied, some say John the Baptist, and some say Elijah, and others say Jeremiah or one of the other prophets. Are you serious? I asked you, I didn't say what others say. When I ask you what the people say the son of man is. This is what many people have said about Jesus. Many of these people have seen Jesus do signs and wonder, right? So many of them have seen Jesus feed 5,000 with few of bread and fish. Some of them have seen Jesus heal the sick. But yet they don't know. Now Jesus went in verse 15 and say, Then he asked them, Who do you say that I am? Do you know the I am that I am? The I am who say whatever you call me, that is what I am to you. If you call me the chain breaker, I will break the chain. If you call me the mountain mover, I will move your mountain away. If you call me the healer, I will bring healing. If you call me increaser, I will increase you. If you call me the multiplier, I will multiply you. Jesus asked, who do men say that I am? The only one that God has opened his eyes to see, Simon Peter, in verse 16, he said, Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of of the living God. Wow. The son of the living God. But wait. Peter could have just answered. You are Jesus. Because that is your name. We know you. That is the name you were given. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The son of Joseph the carpenter. But no. It's beyond that. You need a revelation. You need an encounter. Peter was there on the mountain of transfiguration. Peter was there when his cloth was dazzling white. There was a portal that was open to Peter. There was a reign of understanding that was open to Peter. And Peter was able to tap. As soon as he asked that question, he said, yes, I know. This is what the father said to me. You are the son of of the living God. You are not the son of dead God. Your God is not a dead God. He's a God of the living. Why did he call him son of the living God? Because he brings everything back to life. Even if life is taken from you, he is ready any seconds as you journey with him to give you a new life. Verse 17. Jesus replied, you are blessed, Simon, son of John, because my father in heaven have revealed this to you. You did not learn this from any human being. Not from any human being. There was an encounter. There was a portal that was open. Then the father was able. See, Peter was open to walk with Jesus. Peter was ready to hear Peter was ready to receive instruction. Why only Peter? Why not others? Forced to be called? Forced to re respond on the mountain of transfiguration. He was the one who said, let's build, let's, let's build a, a, a moment for you and the rest of prophet who came and spoke to you. The same Peter was waiting for instruction. The same Peter answer. The question is, why only this Peter? 
Why not James? Why not John? Many times we'll see people succeed in the things they do. We begin to wonder, what is the secret? How are they able to achieve it? Why only this person? The secret is, they are open. They are willing. They are anxious, waiting for instruction. Jesus said, you are blessed. Verse 18 of faith. Jesus said, now I say to you that you are Peter, which means rock. And upon this rock I will build my church. And all the power of hell will not do what? Conquer it. I will build my church. Peter, in your walk with me, your name is no longer Peter. Because you have had an encounter. Your name has changed from from Simon to Peter, I mean to say. From Simon to Peter, which means rock. Now you are unmovable. Now you become unshakable. Nothing can pull you down. Nothing can destroy you. Peter, when you stand, the mountain will fall. When you speak, fire will evaporate from every angle to go ahead and destroy your enemies. Peter, when you speak a word, heavens and earth will respond to your voice. You know why? Look at the next verse. And I will give you the keys of the kingdoms of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be binded in heaven. And whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. This is what God is calling you for. He wants to give you the keys of heaven. When you walk into the promised land. Ay. Ah. Ay, 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 ay. There are things God has given to us that we are not making use of. There are keys that have been given to you and I. Keys of creating wealth. Keys. Ah. Do you know some of you, God has given you key of solution. That when you speak to people, it's easy for people to get solution from you. God has given you key to comfort many. Some of you are the keys of prayer, intercessor. Some of you are keys of giving. You are core. You've been given a key to give. And these keys are keys that unlock things in the heaven place. That permit things in the heaven place. These are key that close the portals of the enemy. Let me tell you the same way there is portal in heaven waiting for you. There is also portal of the enemy there. Open for anyone to tap into it. But God said, I have given you key to bind the diseases. To bind failure. To bind affliction. I have given you key to transform life. These are key that we're giving to you. Are you willing to work with God in the season? Because when you do, ah, I assure you, if it's this God that I serve, that I have worked with him, I have touched and feel tangible power. Let me tell you, the reason why God tells you, go and pray for that person that is sick, you refuse to pray because you are not even sure of the God who called you. You are not even sure of the key has given to you. When God so invest in this area, you are sure. Ah, no, 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 no. I can't invest here because if I invest, I know my money will go down. You don't know. If you know, you will invest. If you know that God, that He's the God that pull down kings and make kings, that God can because of you and close an unbeliever business and wait for you to arise. God can take someone away in your office to promote you. You say, no, there is no vacancy in that office. Who told you? He has given you key to create vacancy. That is the key that I've been giving to you this morning. Amen. Leviticus 26 verse 9. This is the promise of God for every one of you in this house that is listening to me and those that will listen offline 
Leviticus 26 verse 9. The Lord said, because you choose to follow me, because you choose to respond instantly, he said, I will look favorable upon you, making you fertile and multiplying your people, and I will fulfill my covenant with you. Is there anything God has spoken in your life? Let me tell you, hear me this morning. This is the word of God for you. He said, I will fulfill my covenant upon your life. The Lord said, I will look favorable on you. Where it seems there is no favor, I'm releasing favor into your life. Verse 10 of it. He said, you will have much a supply. You have, you have much a supply of crops that you will need to clear out the old grains to make room for the new harvest. Hi! Is someone receiving this word this morning? He said, you will have so much. The Lord said, I will bless you. I will multiply you. I will give you surplus that even the old bank account, the old investment, the old hope, the old net you are trying to fix, you will do what? You will take them away. And you will make room for new. Deuteronomy 7 verse 14. You will be blessed above all the nations of the earth. None of your men or women will be childless. And I and all your livestock will be a what? Youngs. The Lord is telling you this morning that I would not just look favorable on you. Ah. I will not just multiply you, but I will also bless you to be a blessing to others and to be blessed above anyone that you have ever thought that is blessed. He said, above all the nations of the earth, each one of you represent a nation. Every nation around you, I declare this morning, you will be blessed more than any nation around you. You will be blessed beyond your expectation. And there shall not be any barrenness in your surrounding. Everything you lay your hands to do, you will prosper. Verse 15, Deuteronomy 7 verse 15. And the Lord will protect you from all sickness. <laughs> he will not let you suffer from the terrible disease you knew in Egypt. But he will inflict them on all your enemies. Isn't this a great promise from God? Ah, The Lord is saying to you that I will not just protect you. <laughs> But I'm also taking every disease away that you have seen in the past. The disease have afflicted the Egyptians that fought you yesterday. He said, I'm taking them away from you. But you will see me afflicting them to your enemies. Those who fight you. Those who stand in your way. The Lord said, I will afflict them with this disease. Psalm 29 verse 11. This is what I love so much in all. The Lord will give you his what? He will give his people what? Wherever you have last strength to walk with him. In any area God has called you to walk with him. That you have last strength. The Lord saying this morning. I'm giving you strength again to walk. I'm giving you strength to push further. I'm giving you strength to climb that mountain. I'm giving you strength to take over. I'm giving you strength to hold on. And he said, the Lord will bless them with what? Peace. Ah, I release peace over this house. 
I release peace over this house. May you not just receive peace, may you become a source of peace. May you not just receive strength, you become a source of strength. As the Lord look favorably on you, may you look favorable on others. As the Lord multiply you, may you cause others to multiply. As the Lord is protecting you, may the Lord use you to protect others. In the name of Jesus.